Today's episode is brought to you by Feels. Get 50% off your first month's subscription by going to feels.com slash rogue. That's F-E-A-L-S dot com slash R-O-G-U-E. See, I spelled them both. Yeah. It's hard to mess up. You're pretty good at that. Finally. <laughs> so some guys I knew in college stole the Display Millennium Falcon from Toys R Us. Wait, the, wait, that's just like this size? No. Wait. This, this is the one that hung from the ceiling of the Toys R Us. How, how, how big is uh, the display? It, it took up the entire living room. What? Where? <laughs> How do you, uh, what do you do with that? It's like somebody who steals the Mona Lisa. You can't show it off. Yeah. Everybody knows that that's not yours. It sat there in our living room for a while. No one knew what to do with it. And then uh, the person who I responded with it. who friends these are. Oh, no, it's not, oh, actually. really? It's not, yeah, it's no oh. one you knew. Oh, okay. Yeah, <laughs> no, uh, and it wasn't me. I was not involved <laughs> as much as I wanted it. It wasn't, it wasn't race and Murphy? <laughs> it, it was race and Murphy. The arch nemesis of diabolical evil. Taking a look at a Modern Rogue article from themodernrogue.com. Five unstealable things people have actually stolen, written by Ian Forty. I guess we have to rank which of these we dig the most, yes, right? Yes, yes. The first one was in uh, Bedfordshire, I believe. Is that right? Bedfordshire, England. Stolen church roofs. That sentence just gets weirder with each progressive word. Right. Especially the plural of roofs at the end. <laughs> because, yeah. because it's not just one. Like, I understand a church roof getting stolen. Maybe it's a super famous church or whatever. But apparently, like, uh, there's lots of valuable scrap metal in roofing. Over in the 16th century, uh, some, some of them are from the 14th century. All of these roofs uh, built out of lead or copper, people coming in doing it over a long period of time, and they just take a little bit and a little bit, millions of dollars in damage. Like one of them was like $2 million of damage to this church. That's one of the crazy parts, is that whatever they're getting for the scrap, to think about the fact that once there's a hole in the roof and the rain's coming in is damaging all of, all of the interior of this place, you're causing $2 million damage for what? Maybe $60,000 of scrap? I don't know, but it's the patience required in this has to be, uh, commensurate to the reward you're getting, right? Because that's some Shawshank level bit by bit, 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 bit by bit, bit, bit yeah. Right? How, how do you eat a church? <laughs> one, one roof tile <laughs> at a time. Yeah. So first on the leaderboard, church roofs. Yes, very roguish. The only way that I could see something more outrageous is if you stole the entire church, which is the second one. <laughs> People have come home from renting out their cabins or what have you to find that the cabins are gone. Just gone. Yeah, yeah, the entire place being disassembled and relocated. Now, a lot of times these people were caught, but how do you do that? I couldn't steal a package of candy, but then you see the house out there. I mean, look, at some point you get so committed to the bit because it's such an operation to disassemble an entire house and take it. That means you're wearing your orange jumpsuits, you've got your equipment, you've got your crew. Basically, if the owner's not there, who on earth is gonna see a crew of people disassembling a house and suspect that's a robbery in progress? Well, that is something that we've talked about before is the trappings of authority that he escaped in the middle of his trial by reaching over picking up a sheriff's hats and just marching right out. Oh my God. Basically just walking like with the confidence, like, yeah, yes, of course, I'm a police. Hello, I police. How are you policing? If you're wearing a uniform, you can get away with a lot of stuff. Absolutely, dude. Uh, magicians, we say, if you want to hide it, paint it red. So in this case, fluorescent orange. Yeah, and in this case, they had people actually coming out to help them. They, oh, you dropped some stuff here because they look like people doing a legitimate job. Those are always my favorite moments. And this famer Frank Abagnale once talked about how, you know, he collected so much money with a grift that as he was trying to get out, the cops were like, whoa, 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 let me give you a hand with that. <laughs> and then they helped him take the money yeah. out. Uh, okay, so I'm gonna say stealing an entire house Bigger, ballsier thing than just stealing a church roof. Way more impressive, uh, better rewards, I think. And you can also say, I stole a house. <laughs> yeah. So this one I think is really dicey and is way more dangerous than stealing a roof or stealing an entire house millions of honeybees. <laughs> it does sound like something a, an arch villain of James Bond would do. <laughs> it's like, I yes. need more bees. For those who don't know, there's an incredible almond business in California, and there's not enough bees to support all of the pollination that they need season after season. So they import hundreds of thousands of, of, of bees, uh, millions of bees every single year. There's a great podcast where you hear the stories of how all the bees are collected and they make the journey very quickly from one point to the other, and then they go nuts, pollinate, and then 
you rent bees, apparently, which means if you could rent something at some value, which means somebody could steal it. Well, in this particular case, in January of 2017, 488 boxes of bees were absconded with overnight, millions of bees. Someone found their entire stock gone. Yeah, and I guess it makes sense. I mean, you're not gonna you're not gonna post guards, but meanwhile, those are certainly of value, right? Yeah, I'm sure as hell not gonna steal one bee. <laughs> <laughs> much less a lot of them. So in this case, somebody stole them all and I guess eventually they busted him because he had relabeled and split up all that stuff. They were able to yeah. say like, these are not your hives, sir. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. At which point he says, bee powers activate and become yeah. swarm. It was Brian's bees and then he just kind of like markered out the Ryan's bee. bees. Ryan's bees. <laughs> Ryan's bees. <laughs> Ryan's bees. Ryan's bees. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so is this more roguish than stealing a house? In a way, I don't know. When you're stealing a house, that's really impressive just because of the size and what are you gonna do with a house? But when you're stealing bees, the house isn't trying to kill you. That's true. But also like the bees are so sideways. It's it's such an insane thing to do. I, I'm gonna I'm gonna give it a firm more impressive than a church roof, less impressive than a house. Okay, I'm gonna agree with you on that one. Okay, now here is an impressive one. You were talking about uh, like almond fields and what have yeah. you, the pollination there. What if someone were to take an entire vineyard? Now, do you mean the actual plants or just the harvest from the vineyard? The harvest. So you're just taking the grapes, I guess, right? And cutting all of those with a harvesting machine. How, how long does that take? Apparently you can do it to like overnight with one of those giant machines. Well, and, and I guess uh, in the neighborhood that I lived in, I would go on a run and there would be this, uh, I don't know, a bunch of apricots or something growing. And uh, you could tell they were almost ripe. And then the next day, they're just all gone. You have that tragedy of the commons where it's like they're close enough that they probably weren't even good, but everyone felt like it was time to grab them. So it's like, I can totally believe that. Cause again, you don't post guards on your vineyard. How much is a harvest even worth? Well, it happens in a number of different places. Like in France, it was a much bigger poll, but like- uh, Oh, instance, because you get to steal like famous grapes that, that make like award-winning wines and stuff. Exactly, not all grapes are created equal, right? Far from it. Like in Virginia, for instance, two and a half tons amounted to $50,000 worth of loss. So how does this end up in our rankings? It's, le it's less impressive than bees. It is less impressive than bees, but it is, a, you look at a field and you think, how am I gonna steal this? Yeah. You gotta have a plan and you gotta have- uh, uh, Equipment, uh, skills. Equipment and skills, yeah. And uh, a team probably. So for any of these, I think you have to have a team. I think this is actually really challenging, but you're not gonna get stung and you can put it in the back of a truck. Behind bees, is it even above church roofs? Cause church roofs is pretty wacky. I think I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna put this one at the bottom. Yeah, I think so too. I mean, it's I mean, impressive, don't it's, get me it's, wrong. It's, it's, I mean, like it's apparently, uh, you know, Peter Cottontail, you run over and you steal their, their veggies or whatever. Okay, so here's one that just sounds kind of abstract. Like, how would that even work? A bunch of people stealing roads. Again, over in the UK. Well, okay, I don't know if we want to demonize all of the UK in this no. place. Well, those are independently cobbled roads, right? So, so you can't really take a bunch of asphalt off of American well, roads. Well, although I have seen that. I saw some dudes stealing pitch off of the road. What? Because, well, because like um, uh, out in the country, they'll they'll put a bunch of like gravel all along. So it's, it's kind of a dirt road hybrid. Basically, they're like free gravel. And so, I would see their pickup truck and they're just stealing the literal road. So I've witnessed this crime in action here in the United States. Just to sell the resources? Or, yeah, or use it for their gardening or whatever. I mean, it's intended to be a road for driving on, but instead, you know, it's gonna look great in their Zen garden, I guess. Well, uh, one of them in the UK was like 50,000 paved stones were taken. Well, and that makes sense. Like the road was, is just gone. What, what, and, and, and cobblestones, I mean, those, those aren't free. It's not like you, you just find them laying around. You, you have to break the rocks to make the cubes, I guess. Can you imagine that? You're driving and then the road is just not there anymore? <laughs> uh, Somebody took it? Okay, this is so audacious and so big. I think it might be, for me, ahead of even the bees. Really? Well, the bees get okay. points for just being wacky and crazy, and I think it might be, okay, you're at a bar, mm -hmm. somebody casually mentions, stole a house once, and then down the bar, you hear somebody say, a house. I stole the whole road. I think that's what we need to do. We need to start stealing roads and houses. You know, or just say we did. We could just lie. Or we could do that. <laughs> well, but, but in that moment, you're the guy in the middle. Who do you think is more impressive? The guy who stole the house or the guy who stole the road? 
I feel like the road might I'm be the champion. I'm gonna want to hear the explanation of the road a little bit more, yeah. I, I would like to believe all of these happened at once, where it's like the bees go to a house that gets stolen, and then the road that the bees drove on <laughs> gets stolen, and then the roof is stolen, uh, all of it. And it all led to a vineyard. And, and, and we're drinking the wine that's stolen. <laughs> Uh, yeah, no, I'm gonna give Rhodes my, my top spot. Your top spot, your number one, yeah. about the houses and everything. Yeah. Okay, all right, agree to disagree. I'm gonna go with houses still. I think the houses are still, can you imagine that coming home and your house is just gone? Yeah, but you wouldn't even be able to get home if there's no road. I, we're not gonna, we're not right. gonna agree. Right. <laughs> we're not gonna settle this This one. is an eagle versus shark <laughs> thing. I got you. Explain to me the whole CBD oil thing. CBD oil, it's a non-high experience, but it helps you greatly reduce uh, pain, sleeplessness, and anxiety. So you feel good, but you're not blasted out of your mind or anything like that? Yeah, you just get a little loose and drowsy, you feel good and relaxed, helps with pain, uh, you just put a little bit under your tongue, so you're okay. good to go. When we talked about this sponsor, I was just like, man, I don't know how much I want, what intensity or whatever. And then they sent us this flight, they're all like, Take 30 minutes per, start with a low dose, see how you feel, then maybe try the next dose up, figure out your dose, and then use that. Have you never taken any before? Uh, not, uh, no, no, what, what do you got? <laughs> <laughs> I just got back from Vegas, man. <laughs> <laughs> it's not that. We have some right here. <laughs> it sounds a little, <laughs> come on, Brian. All right, I will try, we'll start with the lowest dose here. Okay. And I guess what, you start, it says to put it under your tongue. Put it under your tongue, let yep. it sit there for a few minutes, and just minutes later, you're supposed to start feeling the effects. What's funny is I'm thinking like, how many calories are in this oil? Oh, come on. <laughs> uh, what's great is that they will deliver it right to your doorstep. Mm -hmm. And they have a, a, a hotline that you can call or get text message support to kind of guide you through your journey. Make sure you're doing it right. All right, well, while I'm waiting 30 minutes to find out whether or not that was the right dose for me, uh, in the meantime, everybody who wants to subscribe can get 50% off by going to feels.com slash rogue. That's F-E-A-L-S dot com slash R-O-G-U-E, and you'll be keeping us in business. Thank you, Feels. We are all unbelievably excited to start moving production to the new place, but this is the hard part. We are still only at 90%. We have some big financial dragons that we have to slay immediately. We try really hard to never really ask for cash directly. This is me asking for cash directly.